go ahead and finish the rest of this little video. Um, the reason why I had to do this, split this up into different parts, is because I lose my audio after some time. Camtasia is still acting up. So hopefully this is a duplicate of the first. Um, I just loaded the same file here I had before. So where it was at, I was explaining x equals 2, and then basically you're reading each of these bytes into memory to kind of figure out, and these are bytes by the way, individual bytes of the computer, or if you want to call them data statements, you can call them that. So we're reading off 141, and it's just the same sequence, it follows the same sequence of events. So each time it's just going to keep storing the next number in sequence. And remember, this is what this for statement up here is doing. So we got x equals 3, read by dy equals 32. You can kind of finish it. If you look up the data statements here, you're going to see exactly what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I got, just got back from some karaoke, so I'm a little winded. So I have to excuse me a little bit here. Had a great night singing some great songs. You guys probably didn't even know I did that, but yeah, I like to do karaoke on the side. That's part of my personal life. Um, hang out with a bunch of friends, just have a blast. Okay, so... So let's see, 96. So, so as you can see, it's just duplicating the work that you're seeing above, basically. If I did it all correctly, this should be a 5, not a 10. Just double checking my work, this should be a 5 up here, I just noticed. Because I've been changing the bytes and that. Okay, that looks good. I'm just kind of matching up to what the data statements show. Oh, and then I was um, I was adding the second part here. This is the part I was adding on the video. I didn't show you. I was going to. I'm going to show you that next here. So these bytes here, we're going to have to add to the rest of these um, statements here. So I'll I'll go off from there and show you where I am. The rest this line, so I don't end up putting something in memory here. So it'll change, it'll change the screen color for those who are curious. It changes the border and the background. I mean, you waited two videos just to see that, so excuse me on that. So, I'm going to change this color. I didn't like this color, so I'm going to switch this to black. I also wanted to show you, after I go over this in the video, how to do subtracting carry flag with the accumulator. But first, let's go ahead and finish these statements here. So I added on new ones here after this and took out this return statement and just started putting in just what you just saw. Basically, this is what I did. I, um, oh, actually, I already had that in here, didn't I? Let's see, 33. Yeah, actually, I did. Okay, so I already had this in here. Okay, so I'm, I don't want to repeat myself. I want to make sure I wasn't putting stuff that doesn't belong in here. So that's the two locations. 53280 is the border. 53281 is the screen in the middle. So... What I want to do next is, um, I think the best way to do this is probably start with a fresh demo. So I'm going to erase some of these lines. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of start over, I think. That'd probably be the best way to go. And then we'll take 500 out and we'll just put it back in. So, Now keep in mind, even if you do something, I want to show you a trick. First, let me save this as the next um, example in um, sequence, which I think is two. Remember, you can always double check it up here. Go back to your image and see what it shows under the, the one that you saved. That's the one I saved earlier. So I have some example one, so this is the XM example two. So. so. Okay, anyway, I want to kind of go through, um, and I'm going to show you, like I said, subtract. So we'll create, again, we'll create the statements down here, and then we'll kind of work from the bottom up. So first, let's uh, get a value. Let's just say like 25, for example. Remember, this would be load the accumulator. 
25. And then if you want to do add, you would you, you would do something clear the carry flag first. And it's the same thing that applies earlier as I taught you guys. Um, I hope I still have it up here. You want to go to, yeah, close to another, but you want to open up the PDF for it, which is on this page, which shows you the opcodes. It's on page 68, so I might just zoom right in there. Right here, so you're looking for 24, and you see it says CLC, so clear, set, uh, clear, clear with carry, I think it's called. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay. So, clear with carry, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use, um, we're going to we're going to store this in memory in what's called zero page addressing. So 133.251, and I'll show you the um, the zero page addressing what it looks like for the opcode here. So 133 right here is store the immediate. Well, not immediate. This is the um, I think it's the absolute. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. It's not indirect addressing because I know that's indirect. So I think it's absolute addressing. So you're going to store the two zeros means it's going to be storing in zero page. Basically anything that's under, um, I think it's 256 if I'm not mistaken. It's, um, let me look in the book here. It's, it's in this book. You guys remember this famous map in this like, C64 book? Um, you just look up location 251 and it'll tell you. Yeah, it's in page zero. So it goes up, I was right, it goes up to 256. So that's basically where it ends at. I don't know if you can see that right there. 255 and 251 to 254, you see that? Those are safe places to use for zero page addressing. Whenever you're using the Y register and indirect addressing, you can use those. And I'll demonstrate probably some of those later. But I'm just using that just to, a safe place to store a byte in memory, just so that we can kind of work with our add and addition and stuff like that. So we stored it. And if I ran this program right now, let me just uh, give you a simple example here without the adversary. I'll set um, a data statement here. We'll just use 45, I guess. And then we want to match up the bytes again. So we got what? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bytes. So we change our X statement to 5. I demonstrated earlier how that works. And if we run it, it's going to, it's going to overwrite the previous code and it's going to put in the new location. So if you type in peak 49.152, comma peak 49.153, you'll see that it basically just inserted new code that we just started working on up here. So that's basically all you're doing is you're putting bytes into um, areas in memory that you can use to execute commands straight with the processor itself. So what I wanted to show you on this is if we peak location 251, you'll see a 25 in it. So that's what we stored up here. So as long as you're using 251 to 254, you're safe. But if you try to use anything around there, it, it's already being used by the, um, the CPU or the um, 6502, 6510 processor. So it's going to throw off your um, code. So it's better just to, to use ones that are being uninterrupted, which would be safe for those. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this code to where I was. So 24, um, no, 24, excuse me. Um, We'll start with the add, which is 105. And then we're just going to add um, 5. So add with carry, 5. Once again, you can look at the opcodes. Look up 105 here on the chart, and you'll see what it does. So 105, add with the immediate value of the NN. And if you know, I think I might have showed this in the first video, or I might have got cut off. But basically, add with carry number NN. Is just storing a number here, just like you see this five over here. So we're we'll advocating the five, and then we're going to store it back in the same area where we we originally put the first wire. So we we'll store it back in 251. We so say store 251, and if we've done it correctly. It should show 30 once I execute this um, and put the new code in here. So let's see, got 125, 24, 133, 251. You notice I put the numbers down here. It's easier just to translate them back up here. I get in habits of doing stuff like that. It's good habits to have. And how many new bytes we have? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to show you something too. Let's say you put in 10 and then you try to, you try to run it. 
the system will figure out that you don't have enough bytes. If you print X, you know why, it only goes up to 10. So it basically couldn't find the 10th byte, so we know that it can only take 9. It's looking at those data statements and it's reading them correctly through. Okay, so now we would peek into 251. If I done it correctly, it should show 30. Bam. So basically you're adding with um, values and memory, and that's how you use the add. Now if you want to use subtract, it's pretty simple too. You still use the CLC to set carry with clear. Instead you use 233. I like how the numbers are. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm doing the wrong one. 233 down here. And you change this to SBC and just look up again 233 on the chart and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, 233 subtract the immediate value. So now you've got 25 minus 5. And guess what that's going to be when I run it? If you said 20, you're right. Yep. Let's see, did I store it? Oh, let's, so let's see what it says, 30 here. I probably didn't change the bytes or something. Yeah, I forgot to change the bytes up here. So it was still doing my old accumulation, so I forgot to change it up here. So now it'll do it. Don't forget to change your data statements or it won't work. It should show on 20, um, 20 in there. But 19, I wonder if it's got 19. Probably because I had a value left in there from before. That's interesting. So yeah, stored 5 in here. And subtract it from 5, store it back into 251. Let's just double check my work up here. 133, 251, store 20. Oh, I stored a 20. No, I stored 25. 25 and 251. Subtract 5, store 251. That's interesting how it changed. Nineteen. I'm just not seeing why it's doing 19. Because there's 25 minus 5 should be 20. Let's see. CLC 25. Store it into 251. Subtract 5. Store 251. So let's play around with this a little bit. Um, Gonna take one off here and just try to make it be one less than it is and see if that changes anything. So let's see. Oh, I went down the upstairs, I should have um, added one more. Just trying to figure out this weird math that's going on right now. Well, there's the 20. I have a feeling the CLC or something has changed it, but it doesn't seem to be exactly correct there, but for the most part it will work, so if you want to add numbers and stuff like that in the accumulator, I would wonder if this 251 is being used by something else, though. I stored in uh, 26 in the 251, and then what did I do? I probably need to do a CLC over here, maybe I'm just not doing it in the right place. So if I take this out, and put it over here. Let's just play with this a little bit. See if I can um, get it to work right. That's what debugging is all about, right? Maybe we'll learn something together here. Now it's still on 19. Huh, weird. Some of you will probably catch that. Go ahead and put it in the comments if you caught it. I mean, we're all here to learn from each other, so anyway. But you can kind of see it's doing the math anyway. It's, um, for the most part, it's uh, calculating correctly.